Hello, I'm Gustavo Rassidi. Welcome to Changemaker of the Week. In our podcast, we're going to be interviewing real people that are going to be sharing their real stories about how they deal with change. Today, we're going to be talking with Lucy Schultz. She's an editor, digital strategist, educator, writer, change agent. She's currently the CEO of Public Narrative, an organization that helps communities tell their stories. So welcome, Susie. How are you today? I'm really good. It's so good to be here, Gustavo. Thank you. My pleasure. So as a mean of interaction, do you mind sharing a short, you know, story about yourself? So who are you? Who I am? I Well, I think I'm a storyteller. I'm also a change agent, but my goal is to make sure that stories change the lives of people. And I know they are the things that have the power. So we like to give people the tools to be able to do that. What's the hardest story you have to tell ever in your life? The hardest story has always been my own story. For a, a majority of my life, I've been a journalist. So journalists spend a lot of time telling other people's stories. And when they're asked to turn the light on themselves, it's a lot harder. And what drives your passion about storytelling? How do you get started with this? I think that ever since I've been little, I've been drawn to stories. Ever since I was a little girl, I loved when my father and my aunt would come into the bedroom at night, sit on the edge of the bed, and tell us a story that was magical. My father was um, an editor at the Chicago Daily News, and he used to come and try to make us laugh. And he would tell us these long stories about all of his old girlfriends. And they would be names like Deborah Deodorant, who had a certain air about her and Tammy Table Legs. He made up all sorts of names to, um, to make us laugh. And we always fell asleep giggling. And that to me was just a wonderful gift. And I think of him often when I think of a great story. How do you turn that interest and passion around storytelling into a profession? I think the way I turn it into this is that even when I was little, a teenager rather, um, my biggest rebellion was to not tell stories and to not look at the newspaper. I love reading stories, I love gathering stories, and I love talking to people and hearing their stories. So what do you think is the biggest challenge that most people and organizations face when it comes to telling their own stories, especially in the, in the nonprofit space? I think we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what we want people to know about us. We end up wanting to tell them all the jobs we do, instead of focusing in on one moment that will really tell the whole story of our organization, we think storytelling is easy, and it is not. It takes a lot of brain time, and it takes a lot of practice. And that's the one thing we never allow ourselves to do with any form of communication. We really don't practice. But when you're a small nonprofit organization, how do you connect what's relevant, what you're doing, how you're helping the community with that newsworthy aspect. You have to actually follow the news cycle. That when we're telling a story, the most important thing we can do with the media is have our story told. But the reality is we need to actually be part of the discussion so people will see who we are, people will ask about who we are, and we also cannot fall prey to the myth that we can have control over the stories that the media will tell. When we want to tell our own story, sometimes we rush into what's good or for us in terms of the short term. But in order to be part of that new cycle, I think you need to start building that relationship with the journalists before you actually need something from them. So what advice would you give nonprofits in that uh, aspect? I would say for the most part in nonprofits and really in most sectors, we really <laughs> discount the value of communication. And we also discount how difficult it is. We do not spend a lot of time doing it, and yet we expect results immediately. Good communication, good crisis communication starts right now. It's a, it's a 365 day a year type of um, operation. We should be talking about our story. We should be quantifying our story. And we need to create a culture of storytelling within our organization. So are you inviting people to tell their stories? Are you telling stories? And are you making sure that people have time to practice and understand that those stories and that time you spend practicing is a great investment for the whole company? Do you mind sharing an example of this, of how you help a specific organization going through this process to prepare and practice? It's this great organization in Chicago called Story Catchers. Mm -hmm. Story Catchers teaches incarcerated young people 
how to do musical theater. And so they teach them storytelling and writing, and then they have them perform their stories on stage in front of different organizations. And we caught them at a time of growth. They called, they were going to uh, hire a communications person. So I said, let's push back the hiring just about three to four months and let me work with you, teach you what storytelling is, what communications is, and we will train your people all the way down the line. This is the type of organization that 30 years ago, when it touched the lives of juveniles who were going into the court system, and then these people served 20 to 30 years, what they did, one of the first calls they made was to the people at Story Catchers, because Story Catchers literally changed their lives. But when you read their website, it reads more like a grant, and it's very dry. So it was very clear that some of the students were nervous about talking to people who would give money, right? We actually did two sessions just on how to chit chat. We wrote storyboards for the event. And at the end of the event, their executive director came up to me, shook my hand and gave me a big hug and said, thank you. So that was, a, that was something that warms my heart because we feel like we can help people break down the barriers to telling their story. I like the notion, I mean, talking about how storytelling can drive actual results and impact. How can we use empathy so people that are not even aware about a cause can become not only aware about it and understand what those communities are going through? When you step into the public narrative space is that there are two rules. One, assume nothing. And two, everything matters. We really teach them journalistic inquiry. Don't assume that you know. Don't assume that the culture that you come from is the culture that the people you're talking to come from. As you're talking to people and you leave yourself wide open to asking and to listening, you end up learning so much more. And how do you find that balance to getting involved and helping them at a personal level without becoming part of their problem, so to speak? If you're the one solving everybody's problems and stepping in, then you're not teaching them how to solve the problems. On the whole, you know, it's not about how I feel. I feel great when I can help somebody, but it's helping somebody else feel better about who they are. So what's the worst crisis you ever face with an organization of any sort? I was at the Chicago Department of Public Health, and it was a constant crisis. Most people in the department didn't talk to the media. They had not been trained to do it. And I really believe that, especially in public health, it is much better the people doing the work to be the face of the business. And it also helps them become better leaders when they learn how to communicate succinctly. So um, it took a while for us to get to the point where everybody was trained. We had to untangle the mess, give people good information, and give them sources to go to. And if you expect crisis communication to happen like that, then you're going to fail. What are you most afraid of? when it comes to this journey of changing the world for better? You know, in my good days, I think of myself, oh, Susie, you're such a visionary. But in my real days, I think, Susie, you just think in a different way. And so that means I have a very hard time communicating my vision to other people. I look at something, somebody gives me an idea, and I take the idea five and 10 years down the road right away in my thinking. Where are we going to go? What's going to happen? And for the longest time, I didn't realize that people didn't think that way. And so I had to really teach and train myself how to bring people along with me. It's got to be a slower process. I've had to learn patience. In, how do you keep yourself accountable? Because you're trying to change the world, but also helping lots of organizations like tell your stories. Right. So how do you keep yourself on track? We're definitely a spreadsheet organization. Uh, so we keep spreadsheets on everything. What did we do? Who did we touch? Who did we train? Who does that person look like? What were we training them? And so every week we reconcile that spreadsheet to see what our work is. We evaluate. What did we do? If it's a new class in particular, I play really close attention, always looking at what we did and measuring it and marinating it in a little bit to see if it works helps tremendously. One last thing, like what advice would you give a nonprofit, a small organization or entrepreneurs to make their stories heard? We think the story is all about us. But in reality, your story is all about your audience. Who are you trying to reach? What is it that they will hear? And really, the harder one is, what are the roadblocks for them to hearing you? I want to appreciate your time and all the insights and experience and stories that you share with people. But most importantly, 
to thank you for all the change that you're moving forward and how you're helping organizations tell their story in a way that they are successful, but most importantly, that they are being heard. Thank you. And thank you for doing this podcast. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye.